Welcome to the Live Fit Podcast with your host, Glenn Johnson. Today you will learn techniques for permanent weight loss and improved overall health. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome to the Live Fit Podcast. This is episode 30. I'd like to thank everybody for listening. Today I have a special show, something I've never done before. Normally I do an interview or a solo show, but today I have a co-host, and we are going to talk about the sugar battle. Now, this sugar battle is what's waged between the forces that are causing you and everybody around you to eat and drink more sugar. And our battle, the people who want to be healthier, to fight this, to fight this force that is causing us to eat all this sugar. I have some interesting statistics at the beginning of the show that will tell you how much we are actually eating. It's pretty devastating. First, I like to ask, how are you doing? How is everybody doing? And yes, I would like to hear back. Please send me an email. How's your eating? How's your activity level? Are you maintaining? Are you are you where you want to be? Are you continuing to improve? Are you just maintaining? Or have you kind of backslided a little bit? Have you drifted off? Because if you've drifted at all, we all do it. I have a free guide just for you. It's called Get Back on Track Now. And it's totally free. All you have to do is go to my website and click on it, and you can download it instantly right there. If you go to livefitpodcast.com, you'll be able to get that free guide, get back on track. You'll be able to read the show notes for this and all episodes. And plus, I have a lot of resources that you might find interesting, too. Some books that I like, uh, some really affordable, light, small exercise equipment that you could use in your house just to do a little bit of exercising. Before I get on with the show, I'd just like to give you a disclaimer that there's a considerable amount of background noise uh, going on when we were recording. We're in my house and the kids didn't like being locked out of the room and they were making a lot of rattling noise on doors and trying to get in and, and whatnot. So, Try not to be too distracted by that. It's not too bad. I've cut out as much as I could, but some of it I couldn't. All right. Well, once again, thank you all for listening. Please go to livefitpodcast.com to read the show notes, and I will be talking to you later. Today I have a special treat. I have a co-host. This is a woman who I've known for 15, 16 years. She's my best friend, my confidant, my muse. She's the source of most of, quote unquote, my good ideas. And today we're going to get on and talk about the sugar battle, the battle for increasing the usage of sugar and eating sugar. And the battle that we seem to be fighting constantly against is decreasing ours and our children's sugar intake. Say hi to everybody, Sharma. Hi, everybody. So I first want to start off by reading a, a few quotes from... A article here that I have from uh, Health Promotion in Motion from New Hampshire. I'll give the complete reference in the show notes, but it says that sugar is the most popular added ingredient to foods in the United States. It's in things like ketchup and crackers and breads and soups and cereals, peanut butter, and even cured meats like lunch meat and salad dressings. Most processed foods have sugar in them. If you're not quite sure what these sugars might be, if you read ingredients and you don't see the word sugar, you might think that it doesn't have sugar. But it also goes by other names, such as glucose, honey, sorghum syrup. Pretty much any syrup is going to be a sugar. Lactose is a natural form of sugar in dairy products, but it can also be added to foods. There's fruit juice concentrate, high fructose corn syrup, of course, dextrose, fructose, corn syrup, sorbitol, molasses, maltose, corn sweetener, sucrose, brown sugar, and any syrups. There are others besides that. Those are the biggies that you will most often see in ingredient lists for foods. One teaspoon of white sugar contains 15 calories. Soft drinks are responsible for most of the added sugars in the American diet, and one can of soda contains 11 teaspoons of sugar. Now, 200 years ago, each person was eating only about two pounds of sugar a year, and now we're up to about 152 pounds of sugar a year. Now, I have a bit of an argument on this is that we didn't have the resources. We didn't have the tractors. We didn't have the land. We didn't have the ability to be frivolous with our crops back then because we had to put our money and our effort and our resources into growing food that actually gave us nutrition. 
But now that we're a wealthy country and farming is much cheaper and much more efficient, we can spend our resources on growing frivolous things like sugar. Plus, transportation is a lot easier and more efficient than it was 200 years ago. But in 1970, we were eating 123 pounds of sugar per year, and now we're up to 152. And part of that is because people like the taste of sugar. We have become very accustomed to eating sugar, and when you're used to eating something sweet, when something's not sweet, sweet, you tend to not like it so much. And so industry or food manufacturers know this, and they want their food to be purchased, so they make it taste as good as they possibly can. Now, how much sugar should you get? Well, nutritionists suggest that Americans get no more than 10% of their calories from sugar. Now, if you are eating a 2,000-calorie diet per day, that should be about 13 teaspoons of sugar. The average American is eating about 42 teaspoons of sugar per day. Well, it's really staggering to hear those numbers, you know, and I think the average person might even be having more. I don't know, but... Well, that is the average. So there's some people that are eating less yeah, and other people that are eating more. Well, it's just hard to escape it. Really, it's everywhere. It is, and that's what I wanted to bring up next. We have our villains and then what I'll call our heroes. The villains, as I see it, are the food industry. Everybody who's making processed foods. Pretty much every processed food has sugar in it, and they want, as I said, they want to sell their products, so they want it to taste as good as possible. So they usually do that by adding some sort of sugar to it. But you know who else is a villain? I'm scared. Grandparents. <laughs> There goes babysitting. (laughs) Yeah, I know. This is going to come back to bite me. But grandparents want to spoil their grandkids. And they do that with usually sugary sweet things that we wouldn't feed them at home. Have you ever given the kids cotton candy for dinner? Good. But I'll bet you grandparents do that. And you're at the fair. There's cotton candy. The kids say, ooh, I want that fluffy pink ball of spun sugar grandparents says sure that'll make you happy that'll make me uh popular with the kids so they uh get them the cotton candy and then the whatever sugar other sweets there are because it makes them happy and truthfully once in a while it really is not a big deal but my argument which i'll make again and again is not so much what it does to the body but what it does to the mind the emotions the expectations that you're attributing fun and freedom and love with sugar. And then in the future, when you're feeling down or glum or blue, when you're an adult, you tend to gravitate towards those things. And then it, because nobody can tell you no, when you're an adult, then you keep eating it because it makes you feel good. Yeah. I mean, I feel a little uncomfortable calling the grandparents villains, but (laughs) generalizing here. Yeah, but um, I understand it. You're at an amusement park or you have the kids for the weekend and they want them to have a good time and a good memory and it's something maybe you enjoyed as a kid. And, you know, we're certainly not super strict all the time. We've certainly Mm -hmm. let our kids indulge and we ourselves indulge. So I think it's just to keep it as a a sometimes thing, but there's some things that I'd rather them never experience, like a deep fried Twinkie. I think you can get through life without having that. And I personally don't enjoy cotton candy, so I'd rather they not have it. But I mean, I'm not going to kick up a fuss to grandparents if should that happen. Right, right. I just wanted to bring that up. And I know I'm generalizing by saying grandparents are villains because they cer- certainly are, are doing it with the best intentions. Yeah. But it's still, I feel, a constant fight. Uh, other villains, I am going to also stick my neck out and say other people's parents. <laughs> I uh, Here's an example. The other day I was going to fix my son uh, some uh, really healthy breakfast. And I said it would take about 15 minutes. He wanted to go out in front and play. I said, sure. I went out to get him when it was ready. I found him eating a bowl of Fruit Loops with the neighbor kid. So that ticked me off for two reasons. Because one, he knew I was making him food. Two, he knew what the food was and he likes it and he asked for it. And then three, I don't want him ever eating that stuff. Yeah. 
So you know who the third, the fourth villain is? You. Yourself. Your internal urges. Mom. (laughs) Mom, dad, me, yourself is the fourth villain in my little list here. And people want sugar. Why? Why do people want sugar? I will say I personally am not a big caffeine person. I don't have it every single morning, like a cup of coffee. I might have tea, but um, I'm not somebody that has a lot of caffeine throughout the day. And sometimes it upsets my stomach. And so in an afternoon lull, when you're feeling tired, I might gravitate more towards something sugary because it does give you that little boost, you know? Yes. But then what happens? Then you crash. And then you want... Burn. What? (laughs) Then you want... More. More sugar. (laughs) Yeah. And that's going to lead... I'm going to bring up ways to avoid eating sugar at the end. I want to continue with our villains section right now in the fight for sugar. The villains are the forces that are putting more sugar into our body in whatever way, uh, forcing us to eat it, encouraging us to eat it. Now, I think one of the main reasons people eat sugar is because it tastes good. Yeah, and it's convenient, too. You want something, a quick snack that you can just grab and that tastes good, and that's all your pantry items, which are usually loaded with sugar, whether it's cookies or crackers or, you know, even a slice of bread or something, you know. Or toast, put a little jelly on it. Yeah. Also, I think a lot of adults eat sugar because it makes them feel like a kid again, like they're with their grandparents at the carnival eating some sugary sweet thing. It makes them feel carefree. It makes them feel happy. There's also a hormonal fluctuation there. Serotonin is increased when you eat sugar, and that makes you feel more pleasant, more comfortable, more happy, maybe a little relaxed. And so there is a physiological effect by eating sugar, but you can get the same thing by eating complex carbohydrates too. It's just not as big but with the big push up that sugar high and that's that's the serotonin that you're feeling there's also that crash sugary foods are often fun they're colorful they're bright ever make your own sundae or banana split or go to one of those self-serve yogurt places where you put the colorful sprinkles on there Mm, sure that's fun right yeah colorful yogurt little tastes here and there it's fun so sugary foods are definitely fun well what about stress Have you ever gone to a sweet food when you're feeling stressed? The kids are all up in your hair or... uh... Never. Yeah, same here. (laughs) And lack of sleep, sleep deprivation, or not getting a good night's sleep, such as when you have an infant who keeps you up all night, that causes stress as well, and your body craves sugar to give you a little bit of a, a lift, a little bit of an up to increase that serotonin level to increase your energy, even if it's only temporary. Now, I've done that myself. I I come home and I'm really hungry, and while I'm making something healthy, I snack on a little something sweet. And the trouble is I am super, super sensitive to my blood sugar level. And if I eat very much at all at one time on an empty stomach, I'll, I'll just get really wiggy and tense and uptight and even just really unpleasant feeling don't like it one bit and so i really really try to avoid that but it does happen and i know people do this so what's the best way to avoid making a bad choice while eating well i I just think to tag on to the end of that it also sometimes is something you feel that you deserve you've had a really rough day whether it's work or kids or just life and you just want to treat yourself and you know wow i really want to sit down and have cup of tea and a piece of pie or a muffin and coffee or a donut and you just sort of feel like you're doing something nice for yourself because you you deserve it you've had it rough or whatever it is so which is there's that too it it is you want to reward yourself with a cup of broccoli no (laughs) i love broccoli yeah but I'm probably not going to have a nice big bowl of steamed broccoli, broccoli cake for your birthday. <laughs> when I'm stressed out, I'm tired, I'm hungry, sit down on the couch and I just want to say, oh, I want some me time right now. 
I'm usually not going to have broccoli, and I really love broccoli. And there's, I'm, I'm the one person I know who would eat broccoli more often under more circumstances than anybody else. But I think in that case, I would probably have something sweet. You, you mentioned a cup of tea and a piece of pie. I have a figure right here which might scare you. There is approximately 340 calories in a slice of apple pie. Now, that's not even a large slice. That's a regular, standard, old-fashioned size slice of American pie. If you went off, if you ate that pie and you wanted to burn it off, you'd have to go for a brisk walk, a purposeful walk, like some creepy guy is following you and you really want to get to the next light post on the corner in a hurry. You're going to have to walk for about 75 minutes to burn that off. Just think about that next time you have that pie. Okay. Thank you. Some other reasons we, as people, want sugar. Well, ladies, there are those hormonal fluctuations. Yes. Also, there's insulin resistance. A lot of times people have cells that are insulin resistant. Now, they may or may not be diabetic. They may be pre-diabetic. But what that means is the short answer is that the sugar, the glucose, is not getting into the cell that needs it. So there may be glucose in the bloodstream. There may even be a lot of glucose in the bloodstream. But if it's not getting to the cell that needs it, that cell is going to continue to tell the brain, hey, I need glucose. And then you're going to be hungry still for sugar. Even if your stomach is full, you're going to still want sugar. Now, there's also the answer why we want sugar that goes back millions and millions of years before food was prevalent. Even anything before 200 years ago, food was not prevalent. Food was not easy to get to, especially sugars. Sugars had to come in the form of fruit and then in smaller cases, uh, some vegetables. But sugar was hard to get to, but it also had nutrients because it came with fruit. And when food was plentiful, such as the summer and the fall, people had to eat and gather as much as they possibly could to get through the winter. Think of the bear that comes out of hibernation. He's starving, and he spends all summer eating, and then he goes back to sleep. If he didn't put on a lot of body fat, he wouldn't be able to live through the winter. So humans have that same desire to live and to survive and they'll do anything they can to survive and eating a lot when food is available is the way they have to survive. Okay, another reason people want sugar is maybe they just don't have enough sweetness in their life. Maybe they work in a Did you ever see that movie? I know you did. Do you remember the movie Joe versus the volcano? No. <laughs> the one movie you don't remember. I could tell you who's in it. But I don't Tell remember. me who's in it. Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. Right. Yeah, I don't remember it, though. So Joe, played by Tom Hanks, is working at a really dreary, dreary factory where everybody is pretty much zombies, and they walk in. This gray, everything is gray, and he goes into this... It seems like it's in a basement, and there's this flickering green fluorescent lights, and it just everything is really, really drab and dreary, and he's sick, and he goes to the doctor, and the doctor messes up and tells him that he has cancer, and he's going to die in six months. So he quits his job, and he goes to an island, or the plane crashes, but he ends up on an island, and his life is great. He's happy again because he has sunshine, and he has purpose. And some people have jobs that make them feel sick and ill and they just don't like that they just don't like and it sucks the life out of them. And every time I talk to somebody like that, I think of the beginning of that movie. And if that's you, then maybe a a sugared soda for lunch will make you feel better, It'll bring a little bit of happiness to you. And so that's another reason why you might want sugar. You just don't have enough sweetness in your life. You have a crummy job, you have a, you know, home experience isn't great, or you're stressed out, or somebody you get in a fight with your spouse or kids or friends, and you need to add a little sugar to it. A little sweetness. A little something sweet. <laughs> a little something something. A little sweet thing. Just wanted to get you to make a sound. All right. Now, I've talked about why, briefly, why not to give kids sugar or humans sugar. Why should we? I don't know. Well, natural sugar and fruit. Okay. 
Um, I don't know. I think a birthday cake is okay. I think certain occasions, it's okay to enjoy it. I mean, I don't think you can realistically go through life with with avoiding it completely. Do you think you would be depriving your kid if you didn't give him sugar? No, I don't think I would. Well, I mean, they might feel left out on many occasions and stuff. And, of course, they can thrive, and they probably would thrive even more. But um, I just don't think it's realistic, like in a society way, you know, just from them going to school, them going to parties, them being with friends, them being not under our supervision all the time. And I honestly, I want to be as healthy as I can, and I've had my own weight struggles my whole life, but I don't think that I can realistically say, okay, I'm never going to have sugar ever again. I'm never going to have a piece of cake again, or because there is enjoyment in it, and you know we should just take it in moderation. But I think now a lot of people it's out of control it's every meal it's all day long certainly we don't need to go that direction i agree and speaking of the birthday cake thing this has been something i've been griping about ranting about if you will for a long time is that every single birthday party our kids go to there's birthday cake and it's white flour and sugar and that white flour is absorbs into the bloodstream almost as quickly as regular pure sugar does so it's just this huge bam of sugar to the to the system and it's really hard on the body we're not meant to have big loads of sugar all at one time but you know what i was going to say is grandparents and other parents give sugar to your own kids or or their kids even or other people's kids because they kind of have the notion that it's okay. They can get away with it. They're a kid. Yeah. Yes, the younger a human body is, the more forgiving it is with things that aren't exactly ideal. But there is still that that habit that you're setting up. You go to a party, you eat cake. You go to a party, you eat cake. You go to a party, you eat cake. You overindulge. And that's what I'm really fighting against. Yes, eating a little bit of cake is not going to make you a diabetic. You have a piece of cake once a month. It's not going to make you a diabetic. But it's that that notion, that that habit, that pattern that you're setting up. Well, yeah, and I think you're saying, which is what a lot of people think, is, oh, they're kids. They can handle it. They're fine. You know, when you look at what all the marketing is to kids, Kool-Aid and Fruit Loops and everything is, you know, fruit by the foot and all those snacks that the kids asked me to buy in the grocery store because they're colorful and they've seen commercials and they've seen other kids have them and you know I'm the big mean mom that says no you're not having that no I'll never buy that and um you know they don't like it but they accept it I mean they're used to hearing no and um I just think that you're setting them up for the future to have a problem if you say yes, oh, they can have it, they're kids, well, then they're going to be in the habit of having it. So Mm -hmm. when they're teenagers and then when they're adults and through their whole life, they're going to have these sugar issues because they don't know any different. And speaking of depriving them, um, there's been many, many times when I've been out with the kids, our kids, and they've asked me for something and and I tell them no. And Usually I'll explain why, because it's, it's sugar and you've already had some today or you had too much yesterday or, or whatever it might be. And you know what? They get over it in a minute or two. They've forgotten all about it. They don't love me any less. I know. And I, we've both been in the position where we've been around other parents, friends or acquaintances or something, and they're letting their kids have, you know, whatever donuts for breakfast or, you know, whatever is around and we say no to our kids and they look at us like we are the meanest people in the world and we are just horrible, horrible parents. And it's actually really hard and it bothers me a lot that we think that we're the mean ones because we're saying no to our kids Yeah, to letting them have these like it's crappy hurtful. It's hurtful. $2 donuts, you know. <laughs> it's hurtful. We're trying to do what's right and there's tons and tons of proof to back us up that sugar is bad for a person. You never need to eat sugar. Physiologically, you do not need to eat sugar. You need carbohydrates, but you don't need simple carbs. I mean, nobody would give us those looks and those attitudes if we 
told them they couldn't smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. But yet I feel that eating sugar is the same. If we're giving them sugar, I feel it's almost as bad as giving them cigarettes. And yes, I'm exaggerating. And, but that's, that's how I feel about it because it is setting them up to a path that they're going to have to deal with later. And if you're listening to this and you're having trouble losing weight, why is that? Was it because of the eating patterns you developed when you were younger? Do you want your kids to have to battle the same battle you're battling? No, (laughs) I really don't. Another thing that I hear a lot is parents, I'll be talking with a client of mine and they'll, and they'll kind of recap what they've eaten or I'll be looking at their food journal and then ask them about it and I'll see cookies or soda or cake or donuts or something on there. And then I'll say, okay, what was the situation there? Why did you eat that? Oh, well, I normally wouldn't eat that sort of thing, but you know, I was hungry while I was making dinner and I had the cookies right there. So I ate some. And the next thing you know, I've had, I've had five cookies I said, well, why did you have cookies right there? Oh, well, I just get them for the kids because they like it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But let me tell you something. If you don't need it, if you shouldn't have it, neither should they. And it's even more crucial, if you're trying to go do away with it, that you don't have it in the house. If the kids want it, let them have it at a friend's house. Let them go to the store and get it and eat it there and then be done with it. Don't bring it in the house. Don't bring it in the house. Yeah, and I don't, and we don't, and, um, you know, there's some things, and I, I feel like if I make our own cookies, I feel better about that. Yes, they're still getting sugar, but I'm controlling how much is going in a batch of cookies. I'm controlling what kind of flour we use. I'm controlling everything else that I put in there, and then I hide stuff in there like flax or chia or whatever, and they don't know, and um, they're none the wiser, but... You know, at least if I'm making them, if I'm baking the birthday cake or I'm making the cookies, I just feel more control. Yes, they're still getting sugar, but at least I know what's in it, where it's coming from. It's not a bunch of chemicals, and it's not too much. I always cut my sugar recipes in half. Cookies get half the amount of sugar. Or less. Or less. Yeah, especially if I add something like raisins and chocolate chips, you can certainly cut it down even more. And they don't notice. I do. I won't eat anybody's cookies but yours because everybody else's cookies are way too sweet. I'm. Oh, yeah, then you get conditioned that way. Just like if if everything you always drink is sweet, that's what you're used to. And then. That's why people don't like water. They don't like water (laughs) because it's not sweet. Well, what do you normally drink? Coke. Oh, my God. Coke is so sweet. I can't stand it. It gives me almost an instant headache. It's very syrupy. Yeah. And when I do drink Coke, I almost always dilute it with water. Same with any fruit juices, which I rarely, rarely have. But when I do, I dilute it with water. Another argument I get in favor of sugar, meaning to eat sugar or to push its use, is that kids won't eat healthy foods. What do you do about that? I know you said you sneak the healthy stuff in there in the foods, but what do you do if they won't eat something? They don't like it. Well, sugar makes things taste better. Just put sugar on it. Yeah. Put a little cheese on it. Anything with a little cheese on little it. Little cheese and sugar. Yeah. Uh, I What we do is we go to the produce market and we tell them that they can pick any fruit or vegetable, but mm-hmm. they usually go towards fruit, that they want. And that can be their special fruit. And then we all share it. So sometimes they pick something like... Bizarre. You know, like a whole coconut. <laughs> bread, a whole coconut or breadfruit. Or breadfruit, or one one time one of them picked a star fruit, and just but it's sort of fun for everybody because it's something new and we all taste it. Or they pick their favorite, you know, like a mango or kiwi berries or kiwi or something, and they are way more apt to eat it because they feel a part of the process. They feel some control because they got to choose that fruit. So that's something fun, and that's something you can do for meals too. Instead of just putting a plate of healthy food on the table and them kind of sneering at it, have them help prepare it. Have them chop up the kale and whatever else. Make make those little grilled pizzas. Right. And I'm a big fan of hiding stuff, which isn't an original concept, but if I make a some kind of red sauce for pasta or something like that, I like to load in the vegetables and then blend it in so they have no idea that they're eating kale and spinach and 
yeah. all that stuff. And I mean, I, I do want them to get a taste for vegetables too, but there's some they just don't like. And I can appreciate that because I'm not a fan of kale really, but. Well, it's taken me quite a few years to become a fan of kale. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm a fan. I'll eat it because I know it's good for me, but I don't enjoy the flavor. So I'm okay with them kind of not liking everything because I don't either. Well, what are some other things that people can do to fight this battle of sugar? I mean, what do you, what are, realistically, we all live in this world, and I have my idealism, my ideals of how I should eat and how my kids should eat, and I know that's not real because I get my sugar cravings too, and I'll give in to it sometimes, and... I know kids want sugar as well, and so I do let them have it sometimes. But it's 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 moderated. But what else? What else can you do? What about um, somebody who really likes sugar? What do you? I, I, soda. Soda. What I mean, are you, gonna, you just what don't. What are you going to give for soda? You just don't buy that stuff. There are certain things that we will just never buy. And to be honest, I love Fruit Loops and Lucky Charms cereal. I think they're awesome. I've never tasting awesome tasting. Yes. Not an awesome product, but I don't buy them because I know I'll probably have it. And it's just not even an option for me. I've just totally taken it off the table. It's nothing I'm ever going to buy. It's nothing we're ever going to have in the house. There's just certain things I'm never going to buy or have in the house. And it's just something that the kids accept because they know that's not coming in here. So at least when they're under our charge, we have that control. But if somebody, you mentioned soda, and I think you can ju- you just have to slowly kick yourself, get yourself off of soda, and it's a process. But I think as far as a kid, I mean, we don't give our kids soda every once in a while, and our son asks for it for Christmas in his every stocking. Year. He asks for soda. <laughs> so we give it <laughs> He to loves him. it. I'm sure the minute he's old enough to bike himself to the store by himself, he's going to start buying soda. You know, I... I hope we can turn them off of it. But, you know, there's like, we get like bubbly water, you know, Perrier or whatever. That's flavored. They love that. Yeah, flavored with lemon or lime. You can even add your own fruit to it. And I know if you're really used to Coke, it's not going to be that awesome. But you can certainly wean yourself, wean yourself down. down to that. Yeah. And um, you can you can you can put bubbly water non-flavored in with your Coke or maybe even some lime yeah. flavor. That might be good too. To dilute it a to little. To dilute it yeah. so you're not getting as much sugar and then just use less and less Coke in your drink and pretty soon you'll be down to straight water. I will say one time I I did a cleanse where there was no sugar and I had a headache for like five days. Five days? <laughs> yeah. This is the 21 were you day. Off, were you off caffeine too? Yeah. Oh. But... That's probably... A big part of it. After I finished, I mean, once I got through that first hump of those five days, it was okay. And it was weird. The things that I craved towards the end was like milk, like a latte. That's the only thing that I was really craving. Not a slice of pizza. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, it was this cleanse that was like no dairy, no animal products at all. No wheat, no sugar, no caffeine, no alcohol. So it was like, what could you eat? A lot of fruits and vegetables. Water. A lot of water. A lot of nuts and seeds and beans, you know, rice. That was okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So anyway, by the end of it, I went and got myself a latte. And I got my old usual, which was like a, a caramel latte. <laughs> and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle it. It was awful. And now, even now, like just a regular latte is sweet enough for me. There's natural sweetness in milk. And you kind of reset your palate because you don't realize how much sugar you're getting and how used to it you are. Even if you're someone like I thought I wasn't really someone who had a lot of sugar. I'm not, you know, not that much. But to go completely off of it and then introduce it back in, your tolerance is so much lower. Right, right, right. And it sounds daunting and scary, but once you get over the initial hump, it's really great. And all those sort of cravings kind of just fall away. Like what I what I tell people, the more sugar you eat, the more sugar you want. The less you eat, the less you want. And right there, if you start weaning yourself off of the super sweet things, Cokes and, and the other foods that are super sweet, like cake and frosting, 
then when you do eat it, it's going to be pretty overwhelming and, and unpleasant. You know, I want to um, go over some things how people can best battle their sugar cravings. And the first thing I would say is eat a, a really balanced, healthy meal every four hours. It doesn't have to be a large meal. When I say meal, I just mean it needs to be balanced. It could be 100 calories, so you might consider that a snack. But as long as it's balanced, not a carbohydrate dose, not a candy bar, not a bag of chips for a, a snack. Eat something that contains your carbs, protein, and fats in about an equal portion. And that will keep you from having these highs and these lows of your blood sugar and your energy level. Can we mention our favorite family treat? Yes. What's our favorite family mid mid meal snack or meal? I've had it for just a meal because it's so satisfying. It's my it's favorite thing. What I had for breakfast today. <laughs> and I'm what time is it? It's 1:30 and I'm still not hungry. Yeah. Apple and peanut butter uh, for the win. Yeah. I take an apple and I put it through that slicer. So it cuts the core off and I have these nice wedges and then some peanut butter on a plate and And now we're all into making our own nut butters, which you can just throw some peanuts in a food processor and let it go till it gets smooth and you're done. If and you don't awesome. if you don't have a food processor, you need a food processor. You might be able to use this one every single day. You I might don't... be able to use a blender or Nutribullet or some variation of that. But I don't know. I think the food processor works best, but I mean, there's all that natural oils. You don't need to add anything. And Just throw um, nuts and whir it. That's it. Don't add a single thing. And it's killer. It's awesome. Use any kind we'll of nuts you want. never buy peanut butter again. You can mix nuts. You can throw almonds and peanuts together or some well, walnuts the in there. almond butter with... Throw some flax meal in there for a little healthier, more omega-3s. Oh, hide things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the kids, and then they love to... They love to be a part of it. They love to watch. Can I press the button? What else are you going to put in there? And they love to taste it. And then I ask them their opinion. What should we add? What do you, you know, what would make it better? And just making them a part of all that stuff in the kitchen that happens, they're more apt to be healthy. They're very interested in it. Yeah, yeah, Any kid, are. Any kid is interested in it, I and, think. And maybe they, they balk at food they're given because they haven't had any say in it. They're just sitting there and there's this thing put in front of them like, hey, I didn't say I wanted this. I don't know what that is. I had I had no connection to it. And now here it is sitting in front of me and you're forcing me to eat it. So I think that would have a great impact on pickiness of, of kids if they had more of a say. Another way to avoid eating sugar or to at least decrease the amount you eat is drink lots of water. A lot of times we feel cravings for foods ice cream for example i've recognized that i've craved ice cream and i'll have a glass of water before i have that ice cream i say okay i'll have ice cream but i'll still have that <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have ice cream but i'm gonna drink a glass of water first but you know what happens i drink that water and then i don't want the ice cream as much yeah and i make myself a, a tiny little bowl of it right but be honest you have ice cream i do i like i like chocolate mint chip briars is the best chocolate mint chip but I don't buy it very often because once I get that taste in my mouth, it's hard to stop eating. See, it. even the yep. experts have yeah, problems. <laughs> I I totally do. I totally do. And I was gonna say, I was gonna ask you what's your favorite healthy food. Oh, well there's there's quite a few, believe it or not, but I love tomatoes. Tomatoes and basil is like my my favorite things to eat to eat. My favorite healthy food is steamed broccoli. I also die for watermelon and grapefruit. I like mango too. The big red Texas grapefruits. Those are my favorites. And so if you can find a healthy food that you really like, eat more of it. OD on it. Because the more of that you eat the less sugar you're going to have room for. Just like drinking the water. You can, if you drink a glass of water every time before you go to eat something, you're probably going to eat less, and you're also going to get more water that your body really needs. A lot of times, our cravings for food are really just a craving for water, and they're being misinterpreted. Yes, and I've read that constantly, and I've heard it from you, and I've heard it from other places, and it's really hard to believe because it doesn't seem like wow, if I just drink a glass of water, I'll be fine. But it's, I think it's true. 
Well, think of it this way. You don't have to believe me, but what's the harm if you do it? Yeah. If, like I said, I, I'll have a craving for ice cream, but before I have that ice cream, I drink a glass of water. What's the harm? What is the worst thing that can come from that? I eat a little bit less ice cream. I eat the same amount of ice cream. There's, there's no downside. There's absolutely no downside to it. Drink until your pee is clear. Yeah. <laughs> your, the water should look the same coming out as it went coming in. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> my, my little thing, I have a, we're sitting at, our, uh, at my desk in our office, and I have a gallon jug of water here, and I fill that up pretty much every day. And I just keep drinking, and I have to pee about every hour. And that's my little method of knowing if I'm drinking enough. It also gets me out of the chair so I can stretch my legs a little bit and move around. If you're peeing like you're pregnant, you're doing, you're doing good. <laughs> so back to uh, fighting the battle against sugar, I would also like to say not to use sweets as a reward. That can really turn into a, a difficult or a, a problematic pattern to set up is using treats as a reward. I'm guilty of that, for sure. We all are. Yeah. Ideal is to use something else. So let's say our son gets a goal at a soccer game. What are we going to do as a reward? What could, we, what could we do besides taking him to the Frogert shop? Give him a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a hug and a kiss? Give him a hug and a kiss and a high five. Let him choose where we go out to dinner. Well, that's still food. But it's not a sweet. It's not a sugary food. Instead of, instead of getting him an ice cream cone, let's say, well, we're going to go out to dinner tonight anyways. You get to choose where. Yeah. Or That's a thought. I, I still think put a little money in the money bank, piggy bank. Give him a dollar. Or I don't, I mean, this, this could be a whole other podcast, but I don't think we have to reward kids for every little thing that they do either. <laughs> I mean, is there, like... there is some expectations. Like, I expect you to do well in school. I, ex I expect you to clean your room up. I'm not going to give you, you know, tons of kudos every time you lift your finger in this house. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, let's pump the brakes. Hey, you helped out. Horse. Congratulations. You're, you're a, a person living in the house with us. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would also like to say avoid developing sugar patterns. I think I've already pretty much said this in different ways, but not using sugar as a reward, but also not having dessert after every meal or after every dinner or every time you go out. doesn't mean just because you go out to dinner and they have a variety of sweets and things doesn't mean you have to order it every time or just because you have company over that doesn't mean you have to have dessert. You can. I'm not saying never, but... You don't have to. Is that a dig from our dinner last night? I was saying, I have to have a dessert. I have to make a dessert. <laughs> and it was a delicious dessert, too. What was it? It was a fruit cobbler. Yeah. So it had sugar. It had fat. But it could have been a higher fat. It could have been higher calories. It could have been a pie with all that crust and the dough and the lard and stuff. But it was a cobbler with some ice cream. And so it was peach and blueberry and some oatmeal and some ice cream. Well, there's like sugar and butter in the crumble. Okay. On top. It was, it was, it was a dessert. It definitely wasn't what I would call a quote unquote healthy dessert, but it was definitely on the healthier side of a traditional dessert. But what I want to say is still that just because you go out doesn't mean you need to eat a dessert. And just because you finish a meal doesn't mean you should be rewarded with a dessert. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but your birthday, we went up to my parents' house and we ate dinner and there was no, it was for your birthday, your birthday dinner. And there was no dessert. There was no cake. There was no pie. There was no dessert. There was no mention of it. And it wasn't until we got halfway home that I even realized that there wasn't any dessert and you didn't miss it. Did you? I mean, I don't even remember. See, you didn't, you didn't even miss it. There was no cake, no celeb, no, I mean, we said happy birthday or something, but we didn't sing it. We didn't make, we didn't have a party. And you didn't even notice it. I also think, how many times have you gone out to a restaurant or something and you get dessert because it's a special occasion or you've gone out and then you get it and it's really not that good. Yeah. I mean, you eat it anyway. and Because you paid for it. Six bucks for this Because you paid for it and it's like, I've been disappointed in desserts, you know, eight times out of ten. It's rare that you're like thinking that's amazing. And so if you're going to do it, do it where you know it's going to be great. Do it 
with your favorite dessert, wherever that is. And enjoy the S out of it. Yeah. Really I mean, if we're going to do it, then, you know, balls to the wall. Do it like the way you really want it, not just some I, crappy I, dessert. I mean, we had an anniversary dinner recently at a nice restaurant, and mm-hmm. we got a dessert, and we were both full. We didn't really want it, but we felt like, it's our anniversary. Let's get a dessert. And I didn't even, it wasn't very good. Yeah. And unfortunately, I ate all of it. What you didn't eat. You you ate a few bites and then gave the rest to me. And I didn't care for it all that much either. It was okay. And I was full, but I ate the whole thing. Why? Because I got that taste of sugar in my mouth and I was compelled to keep eating. I couldn't stop. Not like I'm addicted, but it's an addictive, appealing sensation and and taste and flavor in your mouth. And that's one reason why I take such a hardline stance against sugar, because it's so much easier for me to not have it, to not touch it, to not taste it, than to have just a little bit. I'll get my sugar through fruit. Not a problem. I'll eat. I'll eat watermelon and any, every kind of fruit, but I really do my best to stay away from the manufactured sweets, candy and ice cream and cookies and cakes and pies and all those things, even though I like the way they taste. So I think one of the best things you can do is just not have it in the house. Just don't have it. Cause if it's not there, your, your temptation is way down. There's, what are you going to do? Run up to the store and get it? Well, maybe. And if you have it, I mean, if you have sugar, have it where it's something you have to make. So you yeah. either have to decide, I'm going to go through the rigmarole of baking these cookies or not, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I work with a girl who does that. She, When she wants cookies, she'll bake some cookies and she'll make a dozen and she'll give some to her husband. She'll take some next door and then she eats two or three cookies and it's and it's done. And she enjoys them and she baked them and they're healthy. But she also didn't eat them all, and they're not around the house anymore. So she ate them, and they're done. Goodbye. So I had a um, a client I spoke with recently, and he said he had an apple fritter, best apple fritter he's ever had. He ate half of it. He normally doesn't eat donuts. They're certainly compelling. He used to eat donuts a lot, like almost every morning. But he had half of an apple fritter, and it was fantastic. He told me, and two weeks later, he's still satisfied from that half of apple fritter because he conditioned himself away from sugar, away from those types of things, and now he doesn't have them very often. So when he does, he let himself have it. He didn't feel guilty. He enjoyed it, and that's what you can do when you really get into the right place. It's not it's not a battle so much anymore. You just don't have it on your menu. I would like to throw down a challenge to everybody listening to this. Ooh. <laughs> Abstain from sugar for one week. No processed sugar. No added sugar in anything. You can eat fruit, but no fruit juice. Whole fruit only. Whole milk and dairy and any kind what of dairy. About baked items. No. Well, I mean bread. You can have bread without sugar added. Well, like, some some breads are sweeter than others. Whole and it, wheat bread. So, okay, go for it. Sure. But no, no jelly. Scones, muffins, pastries, of course. Right. Cookies, cakes, right. pies. No dried fruit. No dried fruit. Because those are just like little sugar cubes. Oh, my God. Whole, fresh fruit only. Strawberries, bananas, peaches, watermelon. If you want sugar, you don't have to eat that, but... If you want something sweet, have that. No soda? No soda. Artificial sweeteners? No. 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 That's my throwdown. Who's going to pick it up? I don't know. Are you? I could do it. (laughs) What's that? I could do it. (laughs) What's my reward? (laughs) I'll tell you when we're off air. (laughs) I'm going to work on her commitment a little bit. (laughs) No, I think I could do it for sure. Tell you what. I've done it before. I'll do it too. Okay. All right. Wait, is that no dark chocolate? (laughs) I got you. 
86, how? 80% or more you can have, right? Okay, okay. Dark chocolate, 80% cocoa or more. Okay. No, that's 70%. No 70%? No 70, 80. All right. Okay. That tastes like dirt. <laughs> Still like it. Still worth it. Okay. Deal. Oh, God. <laughs> Deal. Okay, that's about all I have for this rant. Good luck on your challenge. You too. Thank you. Well, that's it for the show. Thanks for listening. Please keep those reviews coming in iTunes and Stitcher Radio. You can subscribe, read the show notes, articles, and all about my weight loss programs at livefitlean.com. Once again, thanks for listening, and always remember to live fit.